The room sat in silence after watching the events that had transpired on the hollow display. The first person to speak up wasn't the shocked Illyrian in the room, but human. You piece of shit. You told me they were the ones who decided not to put me to sleep before locking me in there. You didn't realize I was conscious until five years later. Then you go and kill them for helping us? Why would you do that? They could have gotten us out of there a long time ago. I was uncertain what they would have done. That was a risk I could not take. They could have become hostile upon arrival. Once they realized that one of the ones requesting transport was a member of the species that had killed all of their friends and family, it was a necessary precaution. We said we were done with the killing, yet you did it while I was stuck in there, then decided not to tell me. Why would you even show them this? They didn't like us before. Now we're totally fucked. How would this prove our innocence? As you can all see, we were in that facility for the entire length of time up until this point. Tic Tac addressed the room, seeming unaffected by the events in the video. Your main concern is that we are connected with recent events. This disproves that. We thought Professor Irini sacrificed himself to save our people, but you killed him? One of the other officers blurted out. I also was responsible for the creation of the cryostasis chambers that saved your people. A few lives for thousands, Tic Tac stated coldly. Regardless of how you see it, you took the life of one of the most regarded individuals in our species history. Rationalize it however you wish, but you did it to save your own. This may clear your name from potential affiliation with our current adversaries, but does not resolve your crimes against our species. Both of your crimes. The commander declared, glaring at human, his emotions finally starting to show. That was a very long time ago, but now there should no longer be any doubts about where our loyalties lie. My sole prerogative is to keep my partner safe. Tic Tac's robotic voice only seemed to cause the rest of the room to grow more anxious the more he spoke up. It was what had to be done to ensure our freedom in the past, and show that now we have no connection with whoever you may be at odds with in the present. It may confirm your past, but casts further doubts about whether or not you pose a danger to our people. You also claim that you destroyed the ship in the image we presented you. How do we know this was truly your doing? Questioned the intelligence legate. I have ample more recordings of the events leading up to that. We stopped them before they could finish the job and wipe your species from existence, and then facilitated the development of a technology that ensured your continued survival. You are welcome. Tic Tac stated proudly. The room remained quiet for a moment, everyone debating on how to continue with the questioning. Lysra seemed rather worried after witnessing a side of Tic Tac she hadn't known existed. The other officers were doing their best to maintain their composure, having learned of the true fate of one of their species' greatest heroes. The commander took control of the conversation again and spoke up. You have told us a great deal today. We will have to analyze all the information we have, and the board will come to a final decision. This meeting will be forwarded to them for further review. Unless there are any more questions from my colleagues, I believe it would be a good time to take a recess. Hold on, let's not end this on a negative note. Human spoke up, addressing the senior officer. As bad as this has been, what else can we do for you? We've given you all that we have that might show we don't harbor any ill intentions. I get it. We don't exactly have a pristine reputation with your species, but I'm trying my best to make amends here. Tic Tac chirped up from his place on the table. Would you be open to an exchange of technical information? I have analyzed your current military technology, and you are vastly under-equipped in comparison to the forces you are up against. As a further display of our remorse, I could give you the schematics for devices that may help even the battlefield. In exchange for our freedom, of course. There would be stipulations to your release if we do end up deciding to go that route, the commander informed them. And those would be, asked Human. It is not my place to decide. As I stated before, we will review the information that you promised to give us, along with the testimony from Captain Lizra, and decide how to proceed from there. All I ask is that you be patient and allow us some time to analyze everything so that we may come to a proper verdict. Until then, you will remain here under our close supervision. We will give you appropriate accommodations and you'll be treated respectfully. I believe that is not a ridiculous request for me to ask of you. With that, I call this meeting to a close. Human sat in a modest room that had been set aside for him, 
laying down on the cushioned bed in the corner that was likely designed for an indoran. Most of the day had already come and gone, and he figured it was already nighttime on the surface. He glanced over at the brunt in the corner of the room who hadn't taken his eyes off of him. And you're still here. Why? I was told to watch you. I am the keeper of the human, guardian for all that reside here, he replied, as if he was confused by the question. You could do that from outside, you know. At least stop staring at me and maybe blink once or twice. Blink twice if you're in danger, human told him. But how can I continuously observe you if I'm not constantly observing you? That would not coincide with my orders. And if I blink, then that is one second that I am not completing my righteous duties. I shall never fall to my physical limitations. No matter the strain on me, I yield not to weakness, to hunger, to fatigue, the brunt said between slow, deep breaths. Wow, okay, that's dedication. Maybe you could look a little less tense and stop breathing so hard? I cannot take a break. I am the sentry of the human. All right, have it your way. You'll be here a lot longer, I'm sure. You're gonna have to rest eventually. Duty spares no time for breaks, so neither shall I. I'm sure you're very entertaining to be around when you're not working. Human said with a sigh, sitting up on the bed. Not working? That would mean rest. The glorification of my duties is my rest. All right, well, this isn't going anywhere. Tic Tac, any updates so far? He said, picking his box up off the bed and putting it on the table beside the bed. I've been monitoring their systems closely, and there is no information regarding you going in or out. They're being extremely thorough, not to mention us in their networks. Currently, the officers from before are still in the conference room, but have turned off the microphone within. Zait must have informed them of how easily I can breach their network security. Lizra was speaking with them for quite a while, but she was dismissed a few moments ago and is currently en route to our quarters. Maybe she'll fill us in. Think they're gonna decide to let us go? It's possible. And if they decide not to? Tic Tac questioned, already knowing the answer. We leave anyway. Are you sure that's the right decision? I'll do what I have to do. At this point, I'm pretty fucking tired being held places against my will. Very well, she's here. A moment later, Lizra opened the door and stepped into the room, looking over at the brunt, breathing heavily in the corner, his eyes straining from his refusal to blink. Oh, that one's still here? What is he doing? And why does he appear to be in so much pain? Taking his job way too seriously, that's what. Human chuckled. Prior, you are dismissed. You can wait in the hallway until I leave. Captain, I shall never quit my post until properly relieved. I am the shield of diligence, the restless watcher, always ready, always. I'm moving your post outside the door. Watch from out there. As a prior, you are to obey a lawful order. She commanded, rubbing her face with one of her paws in irritation. The brunt slowly backpedaled out of the room until he was outside the doorway, never facing away from human, ensuring to maintain eye contact throughout the entire process. Lizra pressed a button on her interface pad, and the door closed in his face, the loud breathing still audible on the other side. What's his deal? It's not his fault. They're all like that. The brunts, that is. The core genetically altered his species and forcefully bred them to be unable to disobey orders. I say they did too good of a job. We're trying to help them, but it's... <sighs> difficult, the small captain said as she made her way over to the pair. I hope that what you witnessed earlier does not tarnish your opinion of me. I felt I had no other alternatives at the time and resorted to an unfortunate extreme, explained Tic Tac from his place on the bedside table. It was unsettling seeing that side of you. But honestly, from what you both have shared with me over the past weeks, I doubt that's even remotely close to the worst thing you've done, as bad as that may sound. I still don't feel threatened when I'm around you two she said, hopping up on the table and leaning over onto Tic Tac. I told them everything I knew, but they're still worried that if they let you go, you'll run off and hurt others again, or worse to the core. And the fact that Tic Tac is in our systems only furthers their suspicions. My apologies, Lizra. I attempted to cover my inquiries, however I deemed it a necessary risk. It was the only way I would be able to monitor events and predict if there would be any actions that might endanger us. Tic Tac stated. No, I understand. 
but it works in the favor of those arguing that you need to be detained longer or worse. The board should come to a decision soon, since this has taken priority over everything else going on right now. I doubt you will be waiting around very long. Just please don't do anything drastic until they come to a verdict, the captain said worriedly. I'll wait. Hopefully what Tic Tac gave them was enough to satisfy their requirements for releasing me. What did you give them, by the way, must have been important enough to them for their debate to be lasting this long. The full recordings of the events leading up to the destruction of the precursor, a version of your MAS's underweave that might work for them, along with everything we managed to acquire regarding human operations before and during the Illyrian campaign. Why didn't you give them the full production plans for the MAS? Human inquired, referencing his armor suit. I saw the OF's manufacturing capabilities when I was in their networks. If I had given them the entire schematic, they would almost certainly attempt to mass produce them. And in trying to do so, they would likely bankrupt their economy. Then, how did the old humans manage to do it? If that ship was as big as it looked in the picture, there had to be thousands of others like you, asked Lizra, picking herself up and sitting on top of Tic Tac without skipping a beat. Closer to hundreds of thousands. Does your entire species have the tendency to always try to find high places to sit or stand? The computer system grumbled. I never really thought about it before. We really just do it without thinking. Our ancient ancestors would spend their whole lives in trees. I suppose those instincts never left us. That coincides with what we originally knew about your species. Instincts like those are deep-rooted behaviors never truly leave a population as they evolve. For example, human's heart rate always spikes when he sees insects. They were seen as dangers and indicators of disease, so he's genetically wired to want to avoid them. What are you talking about? I'm not afraid of bugs. What gave you that idea? He complained. You might not notice it, but I can tell with the subtle changes in your functions. It's quite humorous, nearly indestructible in that suit, yet specific little things can still easily trigger an involuntary physiological reaction. Lizra laughed. Noted, I'll be sure not to introduce you to Argal's mother anytime soon. The Enduran Queen is difficult for me to even look at, yet I'm quite fond of insects. In regards to how the original humans managed to produce the MAS, it is quite simple when you have the resources of hundreds of thousands of worlds at your disposal. Combine that with one authority that dictates every aspect of society and whose entire goal is to expand to an infinite degree, Exponential growth is easily accomplished, Tic Tac explained while Lizra curled up on top of him. Hundreds of thousands? That can't be the case. Otherwise, everyone in the galaxy would know about humans, unless you originated in a different galaxy. No, the original human world, Prime, may have been incredibly advanced, but they were never able to achieve faster than light travel. They have always been isolated to just one system. Huh? Wait, then how? Lizra's question was cut short by an incoming request on her interface pad and perked up to answer the call. Ensign, I'm here. Has the board concluded their meeting? Yes, bring the human back to the conference room. They have reached a verdict.